the type. Okay, so this is the one and only time in the class I'm going to give you an answer. Um, we don't give you everything that you need to do Lab 2.12. You need to know, understand how to do what I started talking about in the beginning of this class, which is doing conditional stuff. We don't know enough to do if, if, else yet, even though I was trying to, to explain that to you earlier. Lab 2.12 requires an if statement, and you can't do it without it. So, for all those who are in this class, for all those who watch the video, for all those who check the YouTube page, Lab 2.12, the answer is, it, there's a link to it in the description. Uh, I've told the school this. I told them this a long time ago. Sometimes they grumble. I don't worry about it. Um, so the the answer is there for Lab 2.12. But we will go over it here anyway so that we can know how to read these in case we need to. So Lab 2.12 is many documents use specific format for a person's name. So you're going to write a program. The input is going to be one of two things. It is going to be first name, middle name, and last name. Or it's going to be last name, first initial, and middle, in it, dot middle initial. If the input has the form first name, last name, then the output is last name, first initial. So what we're dealing with here is an if statement. See that nice little blue diamond in the middle? That's the part that we haven't gotten to yet and we won't get to until the next week. So we're going to declare a name. We're going to input one of a couple things. We're either going to input last name, first name, and middle name into it, or we're going to, um, or we're going to just put first name and last name. So we're going to declare nameless. We're going to use a split here to split it into name it, nameless using a space delimiter. If the length of nameless is greater than two, then we're going to output last name of zero, last name of one of zero, sorry, and first name. I apologize, that one's wrong. And then we're going to, if it's not, then we're just going to output two things. So that diamond is what you don't have. So the lab is actually in the description, in the uh, um, link to the description. So. For lab 2.13, we're going to write a program whose input is a string which contains a character and a phrase, and whose output indicates the number of times a character appears in the phrase. So you're going to declare a string. And by the way, for those who didn't see this last week, flowcharts and next week's pseudocode are language agnostic. So there may be steps in here that you can combine. Um, like declare a string and have the input all on the same line. So just be just be wary of that. So you're going to declare a myster and then you're going to declare my list. Somebody's going to input the string and you're going to split it into my list. So you're going to have a string and a character and you're going to have I think it's space delimited. So you're just going to have a space in between the two. Now you want to declare character count, and then you want to set character count to the character count. So this is where we're going to use the dot notation on the string that is the second element in the list. Because when, when Zybooks gives it to you, it's going to be a character space and then a string. So you're going to want to split it and then use the first element in the um, list to check against the second element in the list and get the count. And then we're going to output the count. So those are the two labs for 2.13. So does anybody have any questions? I know I kind of went through some of this stuff fast because I messed up in the beginning. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to open up the mics. If not, then um, 
we will call it. I actually had a question about 2.14. Are you willing to address those? Sure. I'll address anything you want. Because I think I'm near the end, but it's it's saying that I'm having Oh, I didn't even go over this. My God. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So it, it's hard. actually the issue isn't with my logic, I don't think, but it's saying I have a lot of white space and um, also new line errors, but I've gone over this for like an hour and I cannot find it. Okay. Um, so it's it's saying um, on my, for like the third fix me, it's saying that I have um, white space in within my solution for the number of characters um, for, for both of the outputs is saying I have white space right before the colons and I've deleted it, put it back and it's still there. Yeah, Zybox is a pain. Yeah, and I even I put it in PyCharm just so I could see it better and PyCharm doesn't say I have white space at all. Yeah, um, my suggestion Take the thing in PyCharm. Then in Zybooks, literally select everything you can and delete the everything. Every right. comment they put in, everything. And okay. then copy the stuff from PyCharm back into Zybooks. Because sometimes Zybooks has strange characters. Right. Has invisible characters. I've seen this kind of stuff happen before. I've seen it happen where students have the exact right code, but they get one of those traceback errors. Right. It's super frustrating. It is massively frustrating. Um, so that that would be my suggestion. Um, and you're not, I don't think you're in my class, so contact your professor and let them know that you're getting these from Zybooks. I don't know how other professors grade. I always go back and look at my students' labs. So if, and I look at the results of anybody who didn't get a perfect grade. So if there's spacing errors only, because Zybooks is a pain, I always give them back all the credit that Zybooks took away. So um, you should get full credit for this, but to try and mitigate any back and forth you might have to have with your professor, um, yeah, delete everything and start again. And I mean okay. just like take it from the very first and go as far down as iBooks will let you and just delete it. Sounds good. I appreciate it. No problem. I'm sorry you're having that problem. And so for everybody else, we'll go actually go over Lab 2.14. I completely forgot about it. Again, my brain is not in the right week. So basically, this is a three-part lab, and you're going to store, you're going to get uh, three separate variables. You're going to um, enter two words and a number. You're going to store them in separate variables, and then you're going to combine them. So this is where we want to do our string concatenation or our format specifiers, and the format specifiers would be easier. You're going to create two passwords in the format that they tell you, and then you're going to output the length of each password. So if we go here, what you'll see is this is basically you're just declaring some stuff. You're going to input it. You're going to declare password one and password two. Then you're going to do your input and your output. And all of that is in section 2.7. If you go back to section 2.7, all you have to do is combine things properly and then out them and output them and then output the length. So that's what Jordan was talking about, everybody. And I apologize for, for being as scattered as I am. No worries. Does anybody else? Go ahead. No, I was just saying, it's no worries. I understand. <laughs> okay. It's been a long day. Sorry. Just a long day at work this week. Um, oh, um, you didn't miss much, Shweta. Um, I will, yes, I'm going to, if you want, I'll put up the uh, 
URL to my YouTube um, so that you can see, and there's a couple years worth of these videos. Um, I actually started on week three this week, so you didn't miss much. But let me, for those of you who don't 